Ow. Welcome back, boys and girls. I'm Pastor Matt, here to read The Little Pilgrim's Progress. Well, we left off uh, with little Christian and his friend Hopeful that decided to come with him on his journey. And they met another boy who didn't really love the king. And he and his friends uh, were having a conversation. That's where we last left off. So let's see where the story goes. Chapter 31, Dama and the Silver Mine. By Enns and his schoolfellows walked on together laughing and talking. Christian and Hopeful were not very far from them, and presently the four boys ran after them and began to ask them foolish questions. They pretended they wished to know whether some of the things that were fond that they were fond of doing were wrong and likely to displease the king. And they hoped that Christian would not be brave enough to answer them truly, because then they would be able to call him a coward. But although little Christian was a shy and timid child, he was not afraid to speak the truth. He had learned to love the king dearly, and no fear of what those, these rough boys might do to him would have made him agree with by ends and his friends. He answered all their questions bravely and truly, and at last they began to feel ashamed of themselves and said no more. Christian was very glad when they left him. And he went on with Hopeful, while Bayan stayed behind with his three idle companions. Very soon, the little pilgrims came to a narrow plain where the pathway was smooth and easy. And just beyond it, they saw a hill with an opening in its side, like the mouth of a cave. A lad was standing upon the hill, and when Christian and Hopeful passed by, he called to them, saying, Come up here! I will show you something! What is it? said Christian. A mine of silver! It is full of rich treasure! And you can soon gather up enough to take with you on your journey! Oh! Let us go and look at it! said Hopeful. But Christian pulled him back. No, no! It is not a safe place! Then he called to the lad whose name was Dema and asked him if it if it were not dangerous. Dama knew quite well that it was very dangerous indeed, but he was a servant of the wicked prince to whom the mine belonged, and he, be, he had been sent there on purpose to tempt the pilgrims by telling them of its rich store of silver. So he answered, It is safe unless you are very careless. But Christian turned away, saying to Hopeful, We will not go. I am sure I have heard about it, and we... And you see, we could not reach it without leaving the way of the king. Then Damar cried, If you will not come, you might at least wait for me, and I will go with you. I am a pilgrim too. I don't think you are one of the king's pilgrims, or you would not try to hinder us in our journey. We cannot wait for anybody. So Damar said no more, but watched but for by ends and the other boys who were not far off. Hopeful turned round to see <clears throat> to see what they would do they did not love the king and they did not care at all about the celestial city to which they pretended they were going so when they heard of the treasure hidden in the hillside they hurried eagerly to the mouth of the cave Dama knew that the people who went into into the cave to dig for silver were nearly always either lost or killed there but he told by ends and his friends that it was quite safe and they were ready to believe everything that he had said Christian and Hopeful saw them enter the cave, but no one ever heard anything of them again. No doubt they ventured too far along the dark and winding passages, and they were never able to find their way back to daylight. When little Christian, or when the little pilgrims had walked for some distance beyond the hill, Hopeful stopped suddenly, saying, Oh, what can that be? Christian looked where he pointed and saw a strange white figure standing by the roadside. As they came nearer, the boy saw that it did not move. It was in the shape of a woman, with her face turned away, turned away from the celestial city. Do you think she was a pilgrim? Well, I don't know. It looks like a statue. I, I wonder why it is placed here by the wayside. They walked around it and looked at it carefully. At last, Hopeful saw a few words carved upon the border of the woman's veil, just, just where it lay upon her forehead. They were old and worn, and he could not make them out. But after a puzzling over them a little, Christian read, read them. 
Remember Lot's wife. Remember Lot's wife. I, I know what it is now. I, I read about it in the library at the Palace Beautiful. Then he told Hopeful how the king had once rescued a man named Lot and with his wife and two daughters from a city that was being destroyed for its wickedness. He sent an angel to bring them out, and the angel told them not to look back. But Lot's wife did look back, and the moment she turned, her body grew quite stiff, and she became a pillar of salt, so that she could never move again. What a dreadful thing is it to put here to frighten us. Not to frighten us, I think, but to make us careful. I am very glad we did not go up the hill when Damar called us. So, so am I, for I should not like the king to punish me. Chapter 32, The Valley of Peace. The two boys were obliged to travel very slowly that day on account of Christian's weakness. Where shall we sleep? You cannot walk all night, and it will not be safe to lie down by the wayside. Perhaps there is another house like the Palace Beautiful. I was happy there. You cannot think how kind Discretion and her daughters were to me. And Hopeful began to ask questions about them, and Christian tried to tell him of all that he had seen and heard at the palace, but the little pilgrim's strength was failing. After the day's journey, he soon became too tired to speak and could scarcely walk. Even with the help of Hopeful's arm, Hopeful was kind and gentle and did all he could to cheer his weary little companion, but he began to feel very anxious when he saw that Christian's face was growing paler and paler every minute. If we could only find a place to rest in, he thought, and as the evening shadows closed round the pathway, he strained his eyes eagerly in the hope of seeing some distant light, which would tell him that they were coming near to a house where they might stay until the morning. But no light appeared, and presently the night came on, and still the little pilgrims crept slowly along, for Christian would not be persuaded to lie down upon the grass, although Hopeful promised to watch carefully by his side. We will go on. I don't think the king will forget us. He knows how tired we are, and he will be sure to give us rest soon, said Hopeful. And now the stars began to twinkle in the dark sky, and the moon rose over the hills and shed her pure, soft light upon the way of the king. As Hopeful looked forward, he saw that the pathway was widening and that a broad river was flowing in the distance. We are coming to a beautiful country. Look, Christian, the river is close to the wayside, and the path must lead through that meadow, which is all fenced in and safe. Christian looked, and the sight of the river and the hope of resting revived him a little. In a short time, they reached the brink of the water and found that Hopeful was right. The way of the king ran close to the river, which was called the River of Life. And the ground on both sides of it was protected by strong fences, forming a beautiful meadow covered with soft grass and flowers and shaded by tall spreading trees under whose boughs the king's pilgrims might rest safely and have no fear of enemies. How thankful Christian was to lay his aching little body upon a mossy, mossy bank Hopeful sat by him and watched the moonlight playing peacefully upon the rippling water. Soon he clasped Christian's hand, saying, The wicked prince never comes here. Oh no, I am sure he does not. It is all so still and happy. The little pilgrims lay down and slept quietly until the morning. When the sun rose, a messenger came to them from the king. This is the Valley of Peace. You are to stay for a few days until Christian grows stronger again. You'll find plenty of food, for the trees are full of fruit, and you must drink the water of the river, which will strengthen and refresh you. So the boys spent a whole week in the beautiful valley, resting and enjoying their life more and more every day. Christian was not afraid to loosen his armor in this quiet spot, and he would sit by the, the river, leaning comfortably against the trunk of some wide-spreading tree while hopefully or while hopeful lay on the grass near him plucking the flowers or gathering up the delicious fruit which was now ripe and falling from the heavily laden boughs 
After all Christian's troubles, the Valley of Peace seemed very pleasant, and soon the color came back to his cheeks and the strength to his limbs, and he felt able to continue his journey. I don't think we are very far from the Celestial City, he said, and, and I should be so glad when we get there. After this good rest, we shall be able to travel faster. Chapter 33, Bypath Meadow. The little pilgrims left the Valley of Peace early in the morning and traveled along the way of the king all that day. Late in the afternoon, they came to a place where a stile led into a broad green meadow. It was called Bypath Meadow, and it belonged to a cruel and powerful giant named Despair. He was one of the most famous soldiers in the wicked prince's army, and he lived in a strong castle beyond the meadow, which could not be seen from the way of the king. This was all written in Christian's book, but he did not think of looking at it just then. The boys were feeling very tired, and they found the path leading from the river rough and stony, and their feet were sore and aching. Christian stopped when he saw the stile and leaned over it. A fence divided the meadow from the way of the king, but a smooth grassy path ran close to it. Oh, could we not walk along this path for a little way, he said, turning to Hopeful. The stones are so hard and my feet ache dreadfully. So do mine, but would it be safe? Then he came to the stile also and looked over. Oh, I think it must be. See, it runs close to the fence. We could climb back again anywhere in, in a minute. Hopeful did not feel quite sure that they were doing right, but as he thought that, Christian knew more about the king's laws than he did, so he followed his companion into the meadow. The grass was soft and pleasant to their feet, but not far be before them, another boy was walking along near to the fence. Christian called to him, saying, uh, Can you tell us where this path leads to? The boy, whose name was Vain Confidence, turned round and replied, To the Celestial City! You see, I was right. We shall be quite safe. We can keep behind that boy, and then if there is any danger, we shall know of it in time to escape. But Hopeful was not satisfied, and when the night came on and the shadows grew so thick that the figure of, of vain confidence could no longer be seen, he felt scared. Suddenly a cry was heard and a sound of falling. Hopeful seized Christian's arm and clung to him in great fear, and Christian too lost his courage and began to tremble from from head to foot. What could have happened? He said, and he called again to vain confidence, but he received no answer. Only through the darkness, the boys could hear that someone was groaning as if in terrible pain. Oh, I am sure we are not in the right way, and it is so dark. Christian did not answer. He knew that he had done wrong and in, cli in climbing over the stile, and he wondered how he could have been so foolish as to think that any path could be safe that led him out of the straight road. But before he could speak again, he felt some heavy drops of rain upon his face. Then a bright flash of lightning darted across the sky and a roar of thunder followed. The rain poured in torrents and the thunder and lightning were more dread fearful than any which they had heard or seen before. Christian began to cry and to wish that he had not been so careless. It was my fault. Oh, Hopeful, I'm sorry. I deserve to be killed, but you would never have come if I had not persuaded you. I, I'm, I might have, said Hopeful, not liking to hear poor Christian's sobs. Don't cry, Christian. It, it was my fault, too, because I didn't try to prevent your coming. Let us turn back. Perhaps we can find our way. By this time, the heavy rain had filled the little streams that ran through the meadow, and the path by the fence was flooded. The water was so deep that the boys could scarcely keep their footing, and they began to fear that they would never get back into the way of the king. The storm lasted for many hours, and although Christian and Hopeful struggled on bravely, they soon found that it would not be possible to make their way to the over the stile in the darkness. So at last, they crouched down together in a little sheltered corner close to the fence, meaning to watch for the first gleam of daylight, and then hastened on their way. But they were both worn out with fright and weariness, and before the morning came, they fell asleep. That's it for this week, boys and girls. 
Well, I hope you take some time to talk with your parents about where little Christian and hopeful were this week and how when we are faced with challenges to our faith from people like By Ends and his friends, that we would have an answer for the faith that we claim. Meaning, read your Bibles, spend time in God's word, pray, ask questions, and God will answer your questions in his timing to help you understand because he wants you to understand him very much, to understand how much he loves you, what his grace means, what it means to have hope in him. Also, what it's like to be in the river of life, to have a place of rest and peace. When we're resting with the Lord, there's no greater peace in this life and for all eternity as we are led, hopefully, through our faith that Christ assures us through his Holy Spirit in salvation. And if you read in Revelations, uh, you'll, you'll see that, and I'll put a link to it here at the end of the video. And then, what happens when we step off God's good way? What happens? And it's, at, for a time, it seems pleasant, but then it can turn and will turn to a place of darkness and fear. So take some time with your parents. Think about these things. Pray about these things. And know that God loves you, and he's going to get you through any and every situation if you put your trust in him. Not just some of your trust, all of your trust. And that's not just for kids. That's for adults and everybody who follows the king and his prince to the celestial city. Thanks. Blessings to you. Have a great week, guys. See you next time.